Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to create your own white label applications using AppGyver, basically a way for you to create apps and sell and distribute, stay tuned, I'm going to be covering the basics of how to do just that in this video. Now before we get started, I am going to have a couple of resources in the description, so feel free to check those out. They'll help with a couple of different other things you may want to do with AppGyver. One of which is if you're hosting this as a web app, it will show you how to edit things like this little icon up here when it's been hosted and basic things like that. So let's go ahead and jump in. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the channel for new content. All right, jumping straight in. I have a couple of AppGyver applications. I have video tutorials on how I made most of these on my channel. But we're going to make, for example, I have this calculating diabetes application here, which is the most recent one that I made. So if I wanted to make this a white label app, I'm going to be duplicating it but there's a couple of things to note here. When using things like, let's just say this Coffee Canine app, we'll start this process with this one because there's a bunch of different API calls and forums. So when I log into this application, you'll see we have all of these pages here. So if I go to this forum, for example, if I were to click on this, and show the logic, you'll see it's basically just taking you to a specific page. So I have multiple forums within this application. This is not a problem, but I do wanna show you one tricky part to doing this white label process, just to make sure you don't have any issues with people when you're distributing. Now, again, AppGyver is completely free, but it's for those making 10 million or less in revenue. So make sure that you're checking into those guidelines, make sure that you qualify. But um, typically the signup process is pretty seamless. Now, we're going to go through, and let's just look at the coffee roasting posts. So you'll see right here, we have the actual post itself. So it's going to pull this information, which is going to be a page parameter. So you'll see we have the post. So now let's go to the forum itself. This is basically where it's going to actually get those page parameters and send them over. So if we click here right on the wall and we go to the logic for this button, you'll see it has some pretty complex logic. Now, We've got this application built out, but one tricky thing to remember is if we scroll all the way over, we'll see an HTTP request. Now, I don't have this as an active link anymore, but if you were to build out this application, which is effectively a social media application for customers, remember that when you duplicate the application, these URLs will be duplicated over. So I'm gonna show you a quick example as to why this could be a problem. Let's say that this is our base application. So we're going to use Coffee Canine, and we've distributed this to customer A. So we've effectively built this application. We've gone through the process. I actually have a how to create a social or sharing application playlist. Link will also be in the description. But basically, we've built this application. It's done. Time to distribute. We put it in Google Play, the Apple App Store, etc. Well, now that that's done, the downside or the tricky part to this is going to be duplicating it and making sure that we've changed everything that we needed to. So here's why that's going to be important. So we'll assume this has already been distributed to customer A. And instead of using calculating diabetes, we'll just continue with this. So I'm going to click make a copy of this app. And then we are going to call this one just customer B. Now, this is going to start the saving the new app process and basically just create the new app and drop us straight in. So we have our new application, and if we go up here and we back out completely, you'll see we now have customer B, and then down here is Coffee Canine. So if we were to assume that this one is already working for customer A, and this new one, we're going to make it a white label app. So we have our base app, which is the social media application for sharing coffee related information. To make this a white label app, we're going to basically create this and make it new for the customer. So to help understand this concept, we'll go over this page really quick. It's on MightyNetworks.com. And basically a white label mobile app, you'll see right here, it's basically something that's built by a third party, but offered under your own brand. So you could create this exact same application, change a few things such as the login screen, all the links, make sure that it's specific to a different company, and it could be distributed to 10, 20, 30 different companies. A couple of things to note, you need to make sure that you're following all local and relevant guidelines, whether they be legal, state, federal laws for your country, rules, etc. So once you've kind of looked into all of that, 
White labeling first step is going to be naming the application for that company. The second step is going to be making sure that you've stripped away anything that makes this application look like it's for anyone else. So one tricky part, which is what we're getting to, is we're going to look at, you have the coffee roasting forum and coffee roasting posts and all of that. So we're just going to click on the forum. I believe this is the one we were at before. If I click on this button, you'll see all the logic's been copied over. If I click on the data and then the URL, you'll see we have the exact same URL. So one reason or one reason, basically the reason I wanted to highlight this is if you were to distribute this to a customer and let's just say you accidentally left this URL here, when this goes to a new customer, when they start allowing users to essentially play around with the application, when they click this button, it's going to start posting data to a different database. So you would want to make sure you've gone through each of these pages, all of your data variables, all of your connections, your themes. Uh, when you go to the launch page and go to distribute, you want to make sure that everything here is set up. And you also want to make sure that you've configured it correctly. So when you go to configure, you want to make sure that none of the images have transferred over. Uh, basically, what I'm getting at here is when you set this application up, you need to make sure that everything is functioning as it needs to for your current customer. It could be really easy to go through, try to speed through, get all of these new API posts and URLs set up and then accidentally forget one. And then all of a sudden you have an application that has 95% of it posting to one database and then 5% posting to another. So the idea of this white labeling is you want to develop an application that can be changed for different customers. One that I think would probably be the most realistic because this application is pretty specific. So one that could be a little bit more realistic would be this ticketing system. So we've just walked through the process of white labeling, but I'm going to give you a different example to hopefully help solidify things and make it make a little bit more sense. So for this ticketing system, I have an application which <clears throat> I actually built this one on a video. So I'll walk through this really quickly. So you'll see we have a couple of sample pages. We have a login page. You would typically have this image here relevant to your customer. And then let's just say we have miscellaneous forums. So if we wanted to white label this app, it's very, very simple. All we would do is duplicate the app following the steps we followed previously, remove any pages relevant to the past customer, and then update the current pages and content and images in the app. So that includes URLs for posting, connectors, the sign-in information, etc. So you would want to go through and do extensive testing to make sure you've done it correctly. But what you can do with this is you have, this is a very basic ticketing app. So if you were to go online and say, I'll build you a ticketing app that's a web app for $100, you could duplicate this app, and all you would really need to update would be for this application, the login page, the miscellaneous forum, and the posts. And really all you need to update is the URL for where this data goes, which would be this data request. And then you would update the data here. So basically the data variable needs to be updated to make sure all of these are pulling from where they need to. And then you could easily duplicate this app and make it for different customers. I would say within an hour, you could create a new version of this app with the different customers information. You could throw their logo on the sign in page. And then another reason this would be beneficial to have multiple apps is if you need to offer continued support. So you don't want to delete this from AppGyver if the customer doesn't need you to. That way, if you have, let's just say, customer A who has Coffee Canine, they want updates, you can go update that. And then customer B says, I need some updates, you can go and do updates for them. If you do it as a single project, you could delete it, but I wouldn't recommend this because I don't know of a way you could just import this back into AppGyver and edit. And then lastly, so going over this ticketing piece, you can update the themes and this would allow you to have 10 different apps here, all ticketing apps, and you can make different incremental changes to each. The only downside is 
it could be a little bit tricky once you've duplicated the application and distributed to do changes in bulk across 10 applications. So make sure that you're developing a model that's sustainable for you. And again, follows all relevant rules and regulations as far as data handling, application building, and all of that. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.